Hello and welcome to Watch Forex. This is Vineet and today is Tuesday, 23rd of July 2024. And you're looking at a chart which is, I think for this particular week, it's a very, very important chart. It is a chart of, it's a daily chart of USD CAD, USD CAD, which is the, uh, every candle in this chart uh, represents a day. That's what I mean when I mean it's a daily chart. So it's going back all the way to 2014 till date, which is representing about 10 years worth of pitch uh, price movement in front of you. And where do you think the price has gone in the last 10 years? How do we look at it? It's from your left to the right. It has gone absolutely nowhere. So it was, it's exactly where the price was approximately 10 years ago. And it's, it's, it's moving in a range. And the top of the range is around 147, 146 and a half. And the bottom of the range is about 120. So it's moving in that 26, 27 cent range in the last decade. And right now it is on the upper side of that band. And where do we think things are moving? So let's talk a little bit about what's happening in Canada. So this uh, Wednesday, which is tomorrow, we have this huge interest rate decision uh, that's coming out. And then let me explain why this is the most important interest rate decision of the decade. Not a year, not two years, of the decade. Because there are some really, really pressing issues uh, economic issues in Canada that need immediate attention because that economy is falling like a rock. It is going down the tubes. It is going, in, it's in bad shape. Why it's in bad shape? Because the, the youth unemployment. See, what Canada has done is they have invited, they have allowed millions and millions of international students that have come and are working for less than minimum wage. So they're working under the table, they're working illegally. And what that doing, what is that doing is, is taking the jobs away from the legitimate Canadian uh, uh, citizens and the Canadian workers that are looking for work. For example, all the delivery jobs, all the cab jobs, all the truck drivers, all the low level janitorial staff, all these uh, blue collar jobs, or factory jobs, all the warehousing jobs, all these jobs are being taken away by these millions and millions of students that have come uh, on student visa and some of them are allowed to work legally but most of them are working illegally so they're taking away these jobs and that's increasing the unemployment rate and that's putting pressure on the GDP and that's pushing, um, as I said, unemployment rate really, really high. And then uh, um, what they have done is that also the immigration, the legal immigration. There's student aspect is one side of the things in Canada. Legal immigration is another aspect of things because once you complete your studies, you have then a path to become a permanent resident. And that is also kind of gone berserk. So what they've done is they are allowing, say, a million plus permanent residents a year, but there is not enough housing. So you have these millions of people on a yearly basis coming to a country where you are increasing your housing supply by less than, say, 30 or 40,000 a year. So how is that going to end up? That is going to create acute, acute housing shortage and it's going to drive the prices high both on the rental side and on the real estate uh, prices. And that's exactly what has happened. So now, a small apartment in downtown Toronto, if you want to rent, is about $3,000. Now, I don't know anybody who can afford a $3,000 rental in downtown about, uh, Toronto, which is a shoebox-sized uh, apartment, not even 500 square feet. Now, if to buy a house in Toronto... Uh, a small three bedroom house, three bedroom, two bathroom for a starter house for a for a small family is gonna cost you anywhere from say one point three to one point five million dollars. And your mortgage is anywhere from six to seven thousand a month. Nobody can afford that. So housing market is in a bubble. Uh unemployment is high. There are not enough jobs because they've been taken away from these immigrants and students. I have nothing against students and immigrants. All I'm saying is the policies are so uh, lopsided, policies are made so bad that the numbers were not taken into account. It was not taken into account that, hey, how 
the job market is going to absorb all these immigrants, how the uh, housing uh, situation will get handled when all these millions and or hundreds of thousands of immigrants, they come into the country. So all these things into consideration is put a downward pressure on the economy. And what they are trying to do is to ease a little bit of pain in the housing sector. Then they are expected to lower the interest rates, even though the inflation is still kind of high. So they increase the rates to tame the inflation because it was touching 7, 8, 9%. Now, inflation is lower, but it's not really low. But there is a lot of pressure on these on the central bank to drop the interest rate uh, another uh, 25 basis points because they did one drop in June. Now they are expected to do another drop. And once they do that, if it's, it's when they do that, it's not if they do that. If they don't do it tomorrow, they'll do it the next time. But chances are that to ease the pain, especially of the homeowners and their mortgages, uh, they may, it's, chances are more than 50% that they will do it tomorrow. And then once they do it, I'm not sure about what's going to happen in the short term. I think the dollar is going to go under pressure. It's going to take all the fall. It's going to weaken in the next, I would say, weeks to, to months. And that is not, and I, in my opinion, it's going to go, towards the 145 mark. Right now, it's sitting at 137, 138. I think it's about to start its move on the 145 mark. And what is our sand in the, uh, line in the sand is 140. So once it breaches 140, hold your horses, guys. Time to go in and time to go in big. That's what we are waiting for. So we are waiting for that uh, breach of 140. We are monitoring the situation of the Canadian dollar in the next coming days and weeks. And once it breaches that 140, all bets are off. This is running to 145, 146, and it's going to run there fast because look at what happened the last two times it made that move. And from 140 to 146, 145, it was fast, like a matter of days, not even weeks. And that's exactly what's going to happen now. But I don't think it's going to stop there. It's going to go a lot higher because the underlying economy and the underlying situation in Canada is bad. Why do I know that? Because I'm on the ground. I see things. It's really bad, guys. And then, and for us, Forex traders, this is how we make our money. This is how we spot these opportunities and we sit on the sidelines till an opportunity presents itself. And this, I believe, is an opportunity that I don't think we should miss. So I'm going to keep you guys updated because this is one trade that I don't want us to miss because we're looking at five, 600 pips in a matter of days, if not a couple of weeks. So hold your, just hang on tight. All right. I'm going to let you guys know when to get in. Just make sure you're following and making sure you're keeping up to speed and up to date on all the updates that, uh, that we provide. All right, guys, I'll be talking to you soon. Till then. Have fun and make lots of pips.